Hi, this is Peter Bay from the Austin Symphony Orchestra thanking you for joining us for this visual recital. The works on the program were selected and recorded by our musicians, and before each performance I'll have the pleasure of introducing them. Some pieces may be familiar to you and others may not, but I can assure you they are all wonderful choices. The Austin Symphony Orchestra family dedicate this program to our remarkable health workers who have demonstrated such selflessness and dedication at this time. Well, let's go ahead and get started. Thank you again for joining us and enjoy the music. During the years 1717 to 1723, while Bach was the Kapellmeister, or music director for the monarchy of the city of Kürten, it's believed that he wrote his sonatas and partitas for solo violin, as well as the suites for solo cello. For the sonatas, Bach set them in the form of four movements, slow, fast, slow, fast. But the partitas were more unorthodox in design and were collections of dances, some of which had four, five, or even seven movements. The cello suites were also comprised of dances, but were always six movements in length and played in the same order. We're going to hear four of our string principals play movements from these remarkable works. These solo works of Bach sometimes demonstrate the depth of a musician's technical abilities as well as their soul, their intimate feelings. So to begin, we're going to hear the ASO's Associate Concertmaster, Patrice Caliste, performing the third movement, Andante, from the Bach Solo Violin Sonata No. 2 in A minor.
That was Patrice Caliste performing the third movement, Andante, from the Bach Solo Violin Sonata No. 2 in A minor. Next we'll hear the ASO's principal cellist Douglas Harvey in the Saraband from the Violin Partita No. 2 in D minor as transcribed for the cello by Laszlo Varga. A Saraband is a stately Spanish dance in triple meter that was very popular in the 16th and 17th centuries. That was Douglas Harvey in the Saraband from the Violin Partita No. 2 in D minor by Bach, as transcribed for the cello by Laszlo Varga. The next performance is also a transcription, this time from one of the cello suites, the second one in D minor, and it too is a Saraband, but played this time by our principal bassist, Jonathan Rouse. <laughs> Thank you. 
Jonathan Ross performed the Saraband from the second cello suite of Bach, arranged for the double bass. To wrap up our Bach segment of this program, we turn to the first sonata that Bach wrote for the instrument called the viola da gamba, which has a superficial resemblance to the cello, and it is played between the legs like the cello. But modern violas are not played between the legs, of course, and to prove that, let's watch and hear our principal violist, Bruce Williams, perform the first two movements from the first sonata for viola da gamba. <laughs>
Bruce Williams performed the first two movements from the first sonata for viola da gamba by Johann Sebastian Bach. From the German Baroque period, we turn to the music of the French Baroque master Francois Couperin. Couperin was Bach's elder by 17 years and composed primarily collections of music for the harpsichord, which contain more than 200 pieces. Many of his pieces had evocative titles like The Little Windmill or The Mysterious Barricades. From the third book of harpsichord pieces, we're going to hear now Le Rosignol en Amour or The Nightingale in Love, played not on the harpsichord but on the flute by our principal flutist, Rebecca Garfield. Le Rosignol en Amour, The Nightingale in Love, by Francois Couperin, performed by principal flutist Rebecca Garfield. 
Hildegard von Bingen was born in 1098 and died in 1179. She was a German Benedictine abbess, writer, composer, philosopher, and mystic, a true polymath. Among her works as an author are books on, on theology, botany, and medicine. She was a prolific writer of songs and poetry, and more of her chants have survived than anyone else from the Middle Ages. The text for her chant, O Pastor Animarum, or O Shepherd of Souls, reads in part, O Shepherd of Souls, O primal voice whose call created all of us, now hear our plea to thee, to thee, and deign to free us from our miseries and feeblessness. To perform Hildegard von Bingen's O Pastor Animarum in an arrangement by Eve McTellan, here is our principal harpist, Elaine Martin Barber. O Pastor Animarum, O Shepherd of Souls, by Hildegard von Bingen, arranged by Eve McTellan and performed by Elaine Barber. Our next performance comes from our English hornist, Ian Davidson, who happens to be the composer of the next piece as well. Here is Ian's introduction to the work. Hello, my name is Ian Davidson, and I play English horn in the Austin Symphony. The video you're about to see is of an original composition of mine called Scenes at the Ranch, influenced by five paintings of American painter George O'Keefe, who I met when I was 19 years old. Recently, I traveled to New Mexico where she did all of her landscape paintings and hiked through the desert and found the places where she must have been standing when she did the paintings. While there, I did some musical improvisations and from those improvisations created the work. Recently, when the COVID-19 restrictions were put in place, I was sitting in my office one day with the windows open and I heard birds, birds everywhere. And I wondered if the birds were actually playing along with me while I was practicing. So I started practicing with the windows open every day and then got the idea to do this video of this first movement, Towers, from Scenes at the Ranch, outside as a duet with the birds in the canyon behind my house. I hope you like it.
That was Ian Davidson, our English hornist, in a performance of Towers from his work Scenes at the Ranch. Here now to introduce his performance of the next piece is our principal trumpeter, Bob Cannon. Good afternoon. I'm Bob Cannon. I play trumpet with the Austin Symphony. Uh, today is Good Friday, so I thought I'd play a piece in the spirit of Good Friday for you, an early American melody, Amazing Grace. I hope you enjoy it, and I hope you and your families are doing well. Amazing Grace, as performed by our trumpeter, Bob Cannon. To bring our recital to a close, we have a most unusual duet arrangement by Daniel Kelly of a very famous melody, The Ode to Joy by Beethoven. Steve Curtis, the ASO's principal tubist, found an ideal duet partner for his performance. Beethoven's Ode to Joy as arranged by Daniel Kelly and performed doubly well by Steve Curtis. All of us hope you enjoyed the music and perhaps discovered something new about what you heard. 
Music truly connects us, and we look forward to performing for you again live on the stage and out in the community. If you are moved tonight, we ask that you consider giving to the COVID-19 Emergency Fund. Any gift is much appreciated and will help us come back stronger than ever. Thank you very much. And thanks again to all of the health workers who have worked so tirelessly to take care of us during such challenging times. We will see you soon. And in the meantime, stay safe. And best wishes from the entire Austin Symphony Orchestra family.